Now remember, you wanted this next gen HMD, this Reverb G2. Now let's see how it actually runs with last gen hardware with the 2080 Ti. Coming up. What's up Sim Races, this is Larry, TJR Sim here, and today we're going to go over AMS2 VR settings for uh, HP Reverb G2 uh, that I have here, and now hopefully you've already checked out my review, and uh, that was happened over just three hours of use, but now I've actually had a lot more time with this headset and uh, can find some optimal settings for you. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a tough one, right? So... You have bought, like the intro showed, you bought or are buying a next-gen HMD, right? And you're probably going to try to run it on last-gen hardware like I am, a 2080 Ti. And it's doable for sure. Uh, however, you're not going to get as high of the, or, or the uh, full graphical settings that you see on other channels, you know, where showing how great it is in the headset. Uh, and still maintain the high 90 FPS range. You're going to have to sacrifice something with old gen hardware. So this headset is definitely more catered to uh, next gen GPUs. Uh, come to mind the AMD 6900 XT that's about to drop. Uh, also, you know the 3090 or the 3080 uh, RTXs uh, should be fine. Uh, talking to some people uh, and. and uh, you know, subscribers that mentioned they had the 3090 or 3080 and stuff. Uh, they couldn't run it in VR or ultra settings with a 3090. It was bogging down, but they could run like medium to high settings and stuff. And they're, they're, they're really referring to like the MSAA uh, settings. So um, I actually did a ton of, of uh, uh, setups for this particular headset and kind of recorded everything. But uh, it comes down to trying to set something very optimal for for the you the user to recommend a setting for you that you can kind of set it and forget it the main goal for this is to have a very fluid race 90 fps as much as possible if you're someone that can sacrifice with 60 fps or lower and feel fine and have a little bit of stutters here and there i got something for you too uh but uh as far as the as far as trying to have the cleanest uh, smoothest experience in other words when the car is passing in front of you or the cars are coming by you uh, on the side if you're going slower or something or you crashed or something like that and you're looking around you want it to be buttery smooth going around you right so uh, these are the settings I'm going to give you so let's get into all the settings uh, let's go over the HMD itself uh, first and you know you pull up your mix reality portable portable portal go to your headset Display uh, the very first settings here Windows display visual quality of uh, my home <clears throat> don't really care about it So I just let windows aside, but you have low medium high to uh, select from you also have 720 or 1080p I just leave it on 1080p. That's actually what it just defaults to When you go on down experience options, you can change it from let windows aside or optimize for performance or best visual quality Again, I let Windows aside. It always goes to the best visual quality uh, when you have uh, decent hardware. If you're running something like a 1080 Ti or something, uh, you might want to step it down to optimize for performance uh, and, and see how that does. But uh, I have not tried that on this. It just didn't, didn't want to downgrade the resolution more than I already had to, so left it alone. All right, so... Uh, just display resolution 4320 by 2160 best quality that's what I leave it on uh, you can also do automatic upscaling for best performance again uh, you can adjust those to uh, tr try to optimize your performance level and stuff now um, when it comes down to Hertz you actually can run this screen in 60 Hertz as well so if you are someone that's fine with running 60 Hertz uh, then your AC Chris won't kick in until 30 and so you won't get that, uh, that blurriness in the background quite as quick uh, when you run in 60. However, with the 2080 Ti, um, running 90 hertz isn't a problem. You just want to adjust some of your settings correctly, which we'll get into it. Also, as a note, I tested it out with 60 hertz as well. 
uh, don't recommend it. It has more of a, not a really hard visual flickering, but uh, there's definitely uh, some image flickering going on. Even if, even when you're just looking at the mixed reality portal here, oh, it's in the dark, but <laughs> when you're looking at that in there, you, you can tell it's like a little bit of strobing almost going on in there. It's not like very distinctive, but it's like, what the heck is that? Uh, and it carries on over into the game as well. So not a good experience and it didn't increase my frame rate any, any as well. And I never really dipped down into 45 FPS anyway in this particular game. So uh, that might be more better for something like ACC. So anyway, that's the settings for the actual HMD itself. Now I run uh, FPS uh, VR, as you can see here for, for all my stuff. And when you come over to Steam here, you got your general settings here. You can actually do auto. I, I don't, but uh, you could do auto and you'll see that the resolution setting bumps up to 116%. Now there's people are calling it a glitch that 100% on this particular headset is um, much higher, more like one and a half super sampling and stuff. But then you read stuff that, um, well, you really actually need around 3,000, you know, uh, 3,000 by 3,000 to be true 2160 of what you're actually seeing because of the, uh, the uh, oh, shoot, I'm forgetting the verbiage here as far as the, um, I wish I could think of it now. <laughs> but as, as far as the bringing the image to what you actually see, the rendering image, that you're actually seeing at 2160 by 2160, you actually have, a, have to have a little bit of super sampling. Supposedly on the HP Reverb G1, you didn't have to. It was true 2160 by 2160. And, and then there's some, some claims that you really don't have to up the super sampling to get that for lens distortion is what I was looking for. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard anything official from, from HP or anything. So uh, there's really not a whole lot of info on it. However, I can tell you the settings that work good and that's what we're going to get into. Now it's not at a hundred percent. That's that it looks the best for sure at a hundred percent, which is around a, you know, 1.5, 1.4 ish, uh, super sampling. So, but what I do here with the steam VR is I come over here to my videos uh, and then I do again, I don't do auto. I, uh, pre-application and go pick the game that I'm going to be playing with. Ultima Ballista 2, in this case, I run it at 50%, which is 2244 by 2188. I've actually tested it. Um, here, I'll drag this over. <laughs> I've tested it a lot, actually deleted some of the data. Uh, but, you know, 100% is, you know, like you saw, 3172 by 3096. Lots of micro stutters, a lot of shimmering and daylight uh, resolution looks the best for sure uh, but just so much shimmering that goes on it's just going to give you a headache so definitely you don't want to run that uh, if you're doing some low paced 30 fps game anything besides simulation that might be fine for you but for this is about sim racing so no i don't recommend that at all actually my favorite choice is what i have here 22 50 uh, percent which would be 2244 by 2188 and i'm giving you the resolutions because uh you know if the steam app updates it and stuff 50 percent may be something different later on so now you have those now interesting enough i'm able to actually run it um a pretty high fps like i i'm pretty much let me drag this other chart over here uh pretty much can be locked in at 90 fps as long as you're racing in the daylight and, uh, and, and, uh, yeah, daylight, once it dips into the nighttime, that's when it starts to become a problem and you start losing some FPS and you get in some frame drops and stuff, rain as well, uh, same way. But, uh, interesting enough, I tested a lot with Silverstone. It's actually my favorite track. So after I got everything nailed down really good on Silverstone with all these different combinations that I was running through, um, I went and tried out a few few different tracks and stuff, and lo and behold, it ran great on Silverstone, which makes sense because there's not a lot of uh, track action, not a lot of uh, stuff that is close, objects that are close to the track, like the stands and stuff, they're a little bit further away. 
uh, so it doesn't end up having to render them that you know to the highest detail um, so it ran really good so as you can see here all I did all these practice sessions right and I also did the races as well now for practice sessions like I have here started at 1600 hours 50 times time progression and ended up to, after doing Silverstone I ended up testing four tracks Silverstone, Jerez, Bathurst, and Hockenham. Um, as you can see here for FPS load now this is with the settings that you see here Steam VR super sampling on 50% again 2244 by 2188 is that what it is? 2188? Seems like that was different. Yeah, 2188. Okay. Uh, MSAA on low. Uh, there is an exception, actually. Silverstone runs really well. It's, like I said, things are spread out away. I can actually run this at 50 super sampling all the way on high conditions, even in the rain. And in the rain, I'll see somewhere around the 50-ish as far as the FPS drop goes. Uh, I don't normally run in the rain anyway, but I was testing it. But still, it got up into the 90 FPS a lot and with the same criteria. Silverstone actually runs exceptionally better uh, than the other three tracks that I tested. However, during the daytime, 90 time, nighttime uh, on Silverstone with the MSAA on high, I'm practically 90 hertz locked. Uh, on medium for sure, low for sure. Uh, but medium for sure uh, if uh, on high it does drop a, a few actually I got some notes here uh, you basically see like five to seven cars ahead of you really clean thunderstorms thunderstorms were dipping around uh, uh, 70 FPS uh, with some mini stutters at the congested sp uh, spots on the track but the average was 86.9 uh, with it on medium rather now when I stepped up to high, same thing, average, uh, it was 80 FPS instead of 90. So you did lose 10 frames, but it didn't upset the Apple card any. It still was just really, really smooth. It did dip down to 71 at the day and night. And uh, it actually looks the most natural with it on high, uh, even at 50%. It's very, very clean looking. And the cars, when they're coming around you and stuff, are just so fluid and natural looking with the MSA on high. Like that would, once you get a bit a better graphics card, that's definitely the way I'd want to go is set the MSA on high. Now, I generally like to run more super sampling instead of that, but even MSA on high and at 50% uh, still looked better than, or actually on par with 76 super sampling uh, with the MSA on low. However, it uh, was less taxing on the GPU. So, um, and 76 was kind of the highest point that you would actually go uh, with this one. So again, at Silverstone, I didn't test that with the rest of the tracks. It's, I mean, this alone took many hours of testing and, and trying out different things. But uh, so yeah, thunderstorms actually on MSA high dipped down to 51 FPS uh, with some stutters and congestions. There were quick stutters. Uh, didn't last too long, but you know definitely disrupted your your uh, immersion factor with a stutter. So I try not to have those at all. So if I was someone planning on running a rain race and I was online uh, online with people and stuff, I would definitely run it on low. Uh, if if I know I'm going to get in the rain, I'd run 50% on low because I want the optimal performance I can and still see far ahead. Rain disguises imperfections and, and clarity anyways, just because it's so misty looking. Uh, but um, it's saturated looking with the with the water spray and stuff coming off the other car. So you uh, you know you could run higher higher levels in a race, but still, if you're doing a race online race, I would I would run it on low. But if you're just tooling around with yourself, playing with AI and stuff, I crank it up to high and, and deal with the stutters every once in a while. Or if stutters bother you, medium is, is pretty pretty damn good, uh, even in the rain. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there at you. And um, I also had some other choices here. Uh, see, one of my choices too was, so I tested it at six, uh, Steam, or Steam, VR Super Sampling actually at 60%. Tested it at 63, 65, 68, 70, and 76 and you know i have different different factors for each one of them and i'll list them down in the description below so you can kind of test them out yourself and all of these were with 
MSA on low, right? For all these settings here. But uh, again, I'll put it in the description below uh, for you to try it yourself. Anyway, that's what the settings were, and we'll jump into the game as well. But I do want to finish giving you these stats here for the four tracks. So, like I said, Silverstone, uh, FPS low, the lowest that it hit at nighttime was 69. At Drez, it would hit down to 54. Uh, Drez, Drez is actually a pretty challenging track uh, as far as the stands being so close to. It's very beautiful. Uh, track and so that one was definitely a lot more challenging and I would get into the uh, uh, High 50s and 60s quite a bit at nighttime uh, so Again with the same 12 cars and this is in practice session, right? I didn't run nighttime for race sessions because I just really want to see what I think a lot of people run which is daytime racing uh, as, as a majority and give you those stats as well, but anyway 54 was the lowest and then uh, Bathurst ran 51 as the lowest, oddly enough, a little bit more, even though things are spread out a little bit further. But I did see a 51 just once. Most of the time it would dip into like, I'm sorry, 51 just once. Uh, that was like at the front part of the track. But uh, uh, most of the time it was Bathurst, the lowest dip at night was around 56, no, 54 actually, uh, was what I usually would see at night around the busier part of the track. Uh, Hockingham, same thing uh, in, in the busier part of the track where the grandstands and stuff are. Uh, and I'm trying to stay in the middle of all the cars and stuff that tax it a lot, right? Uh, once you spread things out, you know, of course, you know, it, you get more FPS, but Hockingham as low as 50. Uh, high is 90, I forgot to add that. Oops, 90. Uh, now all of them hit 90 FPS uh, at night. Uh, they didn't stay in these lows. These are just just one time, you know, lows here and there that would hit. But when the lows hit, you definitely saw the, the frame stutters and stuff. So they weren't very smooth at night with with uh, you know fifty percent super sampling and stuff. So except Silverstone, Silverstone was buttery smooth all the time. Bathurst was the second favorite as far as being buttery smooth. Um, 95% of the time, 90, well, really about 98% of the time, Bathurst and Silverstone, tracks that aren't too congested uh, with a lot of scenery going on, uh, flow really good in this headset uh, with these settings. But anyway, um, at, so averages, I got here listed averages, and you probably saw the screen blink off, and that's basically because the HMD went to uh, uh, standby mode. Uh, your averages here, Silverstone 86, uh, Jerez 79, Bathurst 79, and Hockingham 77. And I was just reading them from the FPS VR and keeping an eye on, on, on uh, you know, when it would actually hit the lowest and, and you know, record that. Now, when I went into races, races were great. Uh, same 12 cars. Oh, time progression just real quick on the practice session. I started at 1,600 hours. I would run it from there till till... Uh, it was completely dark. Uh, I'd run a full solid lap uh, in the dark too when you see all the stars and stuff. So that had 50 times progression. So, you know, when you're adding a, a pretty fast progression too, it seems more taxing on your on your uh, GPU as well because the scene's always constantly changing a lot more. So if you run something more like real time and stuff, I would imagine you'd see a little bit better figures and stuff. But I want to get worst case scenario. Um, now, going on to the race sessions, very promising for the race actually. Uh, same thing, 12 cars, but I started at noon with 20 times progression. Um, and, you know, as you can see here, Silverstone, these are averages. Uh, I did, I recorded the averages and the lows. Uh, Silverstone average 89, uh, Jerez 88, uh, Bathurst 89, and, and Hockingham 89. They all did really good. The one that dipped the most was Jerez. Uh, you'd have a dip as, as far down as 53. Uh, most of the time I would see dips in the 57 to 60 range quite a bit uh, when you were around in a, a certain part of the track uh, where the um, grandstands were and stuff. But uh, like the front straight basically uh, at Jerez. And um, yeah, it would hit that pretty, pretty, pretty consistently in that area. But the rest of it, you know, it did that end up knocking down your average and stuff but overall experience with it was extremely buttery smooth except for those little drop areas uh silverstone the lowest i saw was 84 
which was kind of odd. Most of the time when I look, when I look over and watch an FPS counter, it's setting on 90 all the time. Uh, but I did only have one hiccup and it hit 84. The rest of the time on Silverstone, it was sitting on 90 all the time. So that's where it dropped down the average a little bit. Uh, so again, Silverstone, just a strong track as far as, you know, FPS goes. Uh, Bathurst 87, uh, you know, it'd get busy towards the front part of the track when you're making the, your lap around to the front straight. Uh, Hockingham, that was a pretty busy track as well as far as the stands go. Like, you know, uh, 71 is the, is the lowest drop there. So, again, all these settings, MSA on low, uh, reflections on medium, uh, track detail on low, pit all, shadow on low, enhanced mirror, I left it off, uh, rendered frames ahead four, detail grass off, particle level high, and particle density on medium. So, um... Uh, those are all the in-game settings. And let's, let's just roll into the actual um, game itself, and I'll show you there. All right, so um, when you go to option, the visual FX, that's what it's called. Post-processing on, uh, interior and exterior uh, sun flares. I left them on minimal. E e either of these, even on, uh, on full, it didn't affect my frame rate any. Uh, it actually ran fine. I didn't, it didn't matter at all. Uh, with me post processing just kind of an overlay of what things look a little bit shaded differently bloom off heat ha haze off raindrops on uh vignetta vignetta i forgot how you pronounce that but no uh the god rays no and screen dirt yes and cockpit mirrors obviously on because you're in vr um but none of that affected my frame rate so you can set that to your heart's content uh performance like i just went over in the chart real quick i'll just brief it again 2560 by 1440, 143 hertz. This is 144 hertz monitors. Uh, and I just have it this big just for you. Normally I'd run it down to uh, 1080 uh, just so I can have everything on the screen when I want to pick out of it. But texture resolution on high, uh, you know, texture filtering on 16 times and V-Sync no. MSAA, like I said, Silverstone, baller. You run it all the way up to high. But I even tried uh, post-processing in the very beginning, let's say like at 100% or even down to 76%, all these different ones, FXAA and, and SMAA, and they're just crap. That <laughs> MSAA, you know, obviously is, is, is the better one to uh, start with. So reflections, low, uh, environment map, low. Now, actually, these two, I normally run a reflection on medium, and I run environment map on high. And I found that actually still works just fine, but I wanted to give y'all concrete answers over a bunch of tracks. But when I was just testing Silverstone, this would have run. Uh, but it did fine. It didn't really seem to affect my frame rate. A couple FPS here and there. Uh, who knows if it was from that or just the congestion on the track, don't know. But uh, ran really good. Reflections, now if you're gonna be running in the rain and stuff a lot, you might wanna turn your reflections down the low because that will hurt you in the rain. Uh, but environment map, same thing. If you're going to run in the rain a lot, low as well as what I would suggest. Uh, but if you're running daytime, nighttime stuff, environment map actually on high looks a little bit better on your cars because when you're approaching them, uh, the wings get a get a uh, really distinct um, white uh, light across the in, in the edges of the wings and corners of the door jams and stuff, and you'll see a little bit of a whiteness to it, which is kind of pretty distracting. Uh, so I bump it up to high and it cleans that out a lot. So very good as far as their car detail and ultra, and it, it doesn't textures, you know, GPUs do great with. So track detail on low, you know, it, it's very uh, active track as it is. You don't want to add more. Actually, we add more detail, you know, just so you know, medium high, it basically an ultra, it just basically adds more people on the track, maybe a couple more vehicles here and there. Uh, nothing that's going to make you be like, holy cow, i got to have it this way. Uh, so <laughs> leave it on low, save you some FPS uh, for smoother gameplay. Pit crew on all, I leave it on all the time because even if I have frame drops in the pit, I don't care. Uh, I just want to see my pit crew going around. But uh, shadow detail, now this is a big one. This is the frame, frame drop killer here. Uh, leave it on low, um, suggest the same. I tested it on, on, on medium, high, not ultra because... You don't really need ultra for anything VR, but um, medium is as high as you could go, but very taxing, a lot of stutters on on medium. You're actually better off 
uh, turning up your, your uh, super sampling than you are to touch your shadow detail. So for the sake of testing, I left the shadows on low and actually the shadows on the track are actually pretty good on low. You seem to get everything in there uh, just fine. Obviously the higher you go, the, the better uh, the detailed edges of the shadow go and, and more shadowing you have like in, in your interior and stuff. So enhanced mirror, I, I just for uh, virtual sake, I left it on no uh, with the enhanced mirror off. I normally used to run it on, on yes, especially with triples I run it on yes, but um, uh, you don't need it in VR. I mean, they look pretty dang detailed. You can tell Porsche's in your side mirror. Uh, and if I didn't mention, these were all done with the McLaren uh, 720S as well. But anyway, uh, enhanced mirror, no, I would not turn it on. It definitely can kill your FPS. Now, Motion blur, of course, <clears throat> off, excuse me. Render frames ahead. One is not very good. Uh, two, you have more frame stutters. I would at least go, if you're having problems uh, with some from fr frame drops and you're running one, bump it up to two. You're only looking like 0.2 FPS drop, but the stuttering improves uh, a, lo a lot more. Actually, a noticeable difference. Uh, and then, of course, the higher you go, the better it is for the stuttering and stuff. But... I run it on four and don't have a problem with that. Uh, detail grass off, it's grass. <laughs> so uh, you're not you're not off-roading, you're on a track. Uh, particle level on high, that's basically uh, the you know the tires, you know, when you see the big ball of ball of tire come out and hit you in the car and hit your car from the car in front of you. That's basically what that is. Uh, more particles come off. I actually run it on high because it's not taxing. Uh, because you only see these incrementally throughout the track anyway. So when they come up, it's not a big deal. Um, and the dry, obviously. Actually, on high, you actually see the shreds of the tire coming off, especially at Silverstone, one of these, uh, one of the turns when you're behind someone, you'll see them shredding a little bit. Little shreds, the shards of tire coming off. It looks pretty sick. But uh, leaving it on, on high just to see that. Uh, particle density, uh, that's basically the quantity of it as well i'll leave it on medium that seems to work fine uh more the higher you put it you know the more taxing it's going to be now these two particular ones particle level and density could be very fps taxing if you're running in the rain so if you're running in the rain uh you know crank it on down the low if you like doing a lot of rain races and stuff you're not really going to notice that much of a deterioration in in way it looks uh, a little bit, a little bit, because the, the 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 mist looks a little bit uh, more blurry. Basically, lower you go, but uh, it looks more defined. Rather, the higher level you go uh, with the particle level, but it's very taxing in the rain. So those, if you're running a lot of rain races, leave it on low. But if you're someone that runs day races, night races, whatever, anything but rain, uh, high is fine. Medium particle distance is fine too. So anyway. Um, that's it actually. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I'm going